uh, a summary of the community activities. Uh, I will also remind uh, a few key features of uh, GDAL uh, 111, and uh, then uh, we'll go uh, into further details about uh, what will be the new features in uh, GDAL 2.0. Uh, I will also uh, uh, talk about potential future directions, and then uh, I'll be ready to answer your questions. Um, so a few words uh, about me. Uh, I've been contributed to the project since uh, 2007 and been a member of uh, its steering committee since uh, 2008. Uh, just uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, I've become the new chair of the PSC. Um, I'm as well a contributor to uh, other open source projects uh, such as Map Server. Uh, and uh, I'm also uh, one of the co-maintainers uh, of LibT, FlipGOT, and Proch4. Um, and uh, last year, I've started my uh, own uh, consulting company, Spacialis, uh, which is uh, really dedicated about uh, development, uh, integration uh, of open source uh, technolo technologies, and uh, mainly GDAL and Map Server. Okay, so. Uh, GDAL, uh, as you probably all know, uh, stands for G uh, Geospatial Data Abstraction Library. It's uh, made of uh, two main parts, uh, GDAL for the raster side and OGR for the uh, vector side. Uh, it provides access to uh, really uh, hundreds of uh, geospatial formats, so more than 200 uh, uh, actually. Uh, it's widely used in yeah, many, many software of just uh, given a, uh, small, a small list of, of the most known ones, but uh, don't feel offended if your own project is not listed. There, there is actually a page on the wiki that reference more than uh, 93 uh, projects, and so feel free to add yours uh, if it's not already in there. <laughs> uh, the project was started in 1998 uh, by Frank Formerdam, so hopefully you have uh, attended in the presentation at the beginning of the morning. Um, GDAL is a project of GEO since uh, 2008. It's uh, licensed with a MITx uh, license, which is a permissive uh, license. Um, and uh, the last stats I did, uh, I was quite, quite impressed to see that we, we uh, did uh, beyond the one million uh, physical lines of code uh, threshold. So well, I, sh I think it, it actually means uh, <laughs> about how large uh, the, the project is. Um, and uh, we have a fairly extensive uh, uh, regression test suite uh, with a more one, 160 uh, line of codes of Python. And we have a pretty good uh, line coverage to uh, the main features uh, of, uh, of GDAL are the support of data sets of uh, arbitrary size, uh, even if your uh, computer has a very uh, little memory. Um, it's a Cypress library uh, with a, a C API. It runs on uh, virtually uh, any OS. Uh, it has uh, bindings uh, to uh, Python, Perl, C Sharp, Java, there are, there are also the uh, bindings uh, for Go, for Ruby, for well, many languages. Um, it uses uh, OGC WKT for coordinate systems and uh, Proch4 as a uh, reprojection engine. Um, and the various formats are supported by uh, uh, drivers that uh, implement uh, common abstractions. So that's uh, really the A in, uh, in GDAL. Um, and it also provides uh, various utilities to, to do common operations, um, such as a uh, translation of formats, uh, reprojection, uh, subsetting, mosaicing, tying. And it can work uh, with uh, local files, of course, but those are more esoteric uh, source of files. So you have probably uh, heard uh, about uh, VSI curl if you uh, intended uh, a few of the previous talks. Uh, you can also read uh, data from uh, compressed uh, archives or in-memory files. Um, 
um, regarding, uh, oops, I think, yeah, I skipped that one. Uh, the raster features, uh, it has uh, efficient support for, uh, for large images, uh, and it, uh, it uses uh, the tilings uh, and overviews uh, to provide uh, a random access uh, to uh, arbitrary <coughs> region or uh, resolutions. Uh, it uh, has also a, a block caching mechanism uh, that can enable uh, faster access, uh, especially for compressed uh, data sources. Uh, it has an efficient warping engine to do reprojection and uh, various <coughs> algorithms uh, to do rasterization, uh, vectorization, interpolation of void cells, and some filters too, and uh, uh, quite a set of uh, utilities to do translation, subsetting, uh, warping, uh, building of pyramids, etc., etc. Um, so here's a, an attempt to a bit classify the various uh, raster formats that are supported. You have uh, really uh, uh, images uh, which, has, which are not uh, geospatial or might be used uh, geospatial but are not natively uh, geospatial, so such as uh, JPEG, uh, PNG, GIF, uh, WebP, uh, and uh, more recently uh, BPG, which is a uh, better portable graphics. Uh, which is a format that is based on uh, HEVC, uh, uh, which is a, a video codec for uh, H.265, and it uses a still images uh, profile of, uh, of this codec. And this format uh, uh, has approximately uh, uh, half the size of uh, JPEG images for the same quality. Uh, of course, it deals with a uh, common geospatial uh, formats, uh, GeoTIFF, uh, Adas Imagine, and, and ITF, with uh, wavelet-based uh, formats. Uh, most of them, uh, unfortunately, uh, only uh, available through uh, proprietary uh, SDKs, uh, except uh, JPEG 2000, for which we, we begin to have uh, uh, reasonably uh, well-working uh, open source uh, implementations. Um, it also provides uh, access to uh, the databases, uh, uh, raster solutions, uh, record raster, uh, post-GIS raster, Razaman. Uh, it deals also with uh, portable uh, databases, such as uh, raster light, uh, MB tiles, uh, and uh, GeoPackage, which is uh, a new feature in GDAL 2.0. I will uh, give more details afterwards. Uh, it can also fetch uh, data from uh, uh, OGC uh, web services, WMS, uh, WCS, deals with uh, radar, radar data sources and uh, uh, elevation products uh, and uh, what I've called the containers, uh, which are uh, generally for multidimensional uh, uh, data, uh, HDF and NetCDF, uh, other unclassified uh, <laughs> Uh, sources uh, such as uh, geospatial uh, PDF and uh, just, I think, two really GDAL specific formats, which are the in-memory uh, driver and uh, the VRT for virtual, uh, uh, virtual format. So um, above uh, one 137 formats. Uh, regarding the vector side of the library, um, it offers a geometry model uh, and which is based on uh, OGC uh, simple features. Uh, it has uh, command lines to uh, do format translation and uh, request uh, info about uh, the sources or indexing them, uh, doing uh, fast spe special uh, filters, uh, and it uses uh, geos for special operations. Um, it has uh, also an uh, it's on uh, SQL uh, um, engine, and <coughs> since uh, GDAL 1.10, you can also use uh, SQLite, uh, SQL engine, which combined with Specialite uh, can enable to do uh, some interesting uh, spatial analysis without necessarily having to ingest uh, your data into uh, uh, full-featured uh, 
especially on data database. Um, well, the, the list of vector formats you will find again the GIS uh, formats, uh, JFile file uh, mapping for uh, the S3 uh, personal or file geo database. You have uh, the CAD uh, formats. Uh, the databases, of course, Podgist, uh, Oracle, uh, MySQL, uh, uh, Microsoft Spatial, um, and generic uh, ODBC. You have the portable the databases, such as uh, SQLite, Spatialite, and uh, GeoPackage. You have uh, also the exchange uh, vector formats, such as K KML. And since uh, the last version, GDAL 1.11, uh, GDAL is a reference implementa implementation for uh, KML 2.2. Uh, it supports also GML, GeoJSON, uh, the various web services, uh, uh, WFS, uh, the Google Fusion Tables, uh, CartoDB, CoachDB, uh, CloudHunt, and uh, GME. So for GME, uh, you will have to use uh, uh, just this year because uh, next year it won't be uh, available anymore. So if you want to try the driver, <laughs> please do it quickly. <laughs> uh, it also supports a large range of uh, national uh, databases, uh, 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 format, sorry. Uh, each uh, country tends to have uh, its own uh, uh, dedicated format. Uh, it supports also uh, many non-special uh, uh, databases, um, formats uh, such as CSV and the uh, spreadsheets formats of uh, uh, Excel and uh, um, OpenOffice. And uh, you'll find again uh, the in memory uh, data source or uh, the virtual uh, format. Uh, regarding the, the community, uh, we have uh, six, uh, 57 official uh, subversion uh, committers. Uh, in the last um, year, uh, 25 have been active, uh, actually, and uh, we have received a contribution for 42 uh, non-committer contributors. Uh, the mailing list uh, has uh, more than uh, 2,000 subscribers and uh, with uh, quite uh, a high volume of exchanges uh, with uh, nearly uh, 3,000 messages in the <coughs> last uh, year and with a, a fairly high rate uh, uh, that have received uh, more than one uh, answer. Um, we have uh, received about 500 tickets uh, the, during the last year, uh, over a total uh, that yeah, begins to approach uh, 6,000. And uh, we have uh, 580 uh, that are still opened. And uh, I really want to, uh, to thank uh, Juka Rakonen, uh, which is one of our new uh, PSC members for having uh, uh, go, go through uh, those tickets and uh, close the more than uh, 200 uh, of them, <laughs> which is uh, really a, <laughs> a fairly uh, tidy task. <laughs> um, regarding the 111 release, it was released uh, April uh, last year, and uh, since then we have issued uh, two bug fixes release. Uh, the last one uh, being uh, the 111.2 uh, uh, last month, actually. Um, this version had uh, eight new drivers. Uh, yeah, it was uh, CartoDB, GME, GeoPackage uh, for the vector side. Uh, the open file GDB, which is a, a reverse engineering uh, uh, implementation of the file GDB format. Um, and uh, five uh, new main uh, features, uh, uh, the enhanced uh, raster attribute table, which is a capability of uh, dealing with uh, raster attribute tables that uh, don't fit uh, into memory. Uh, we have the multiple geometry fields per feature, uh, which is something I'm going uh, to detail uh, afterwards, and uh, something which is really more advanced, uh, the, the capability of uh, accessing uh, uh, raster data sets uh, as virtual uh, memory mapping. And soon, GDAL 2.0, yeah. Uh, 
so th during this cycle, uh, there have been uh, eight uh, RFCs that have been implemented. Um, I will go through the, the detail of them. So of course, it's a trade-off between uh, implementing uh, new features and not breaking uh, everything that used to work uh, before. Uh, there's a migration guide uh, that is being uh, uh, updated uh, with uh, uh, the issues uh, that uh, might uh, occur with uh, the various uh, RFCs. Uh, up to now, we have uh, seven new drivers. BPG, I've uh, talked about it. Uh, GeoPackage raster, uh, I will give more details afterwards. Uh, key also, and uh, we have uh, format uh, support for uh, a NASA uh, format, so which is a raw format. Uh, the Cloudland driver, which uh, is a variation of the existing uh, um, Coach DB. We have uh, also support for the, for the native uh, format of OpenJump, which is JML, which is a, a variation of GML, and uh, a format for uh, a specific uh, hydraulic uh, model uh, software. So one of the main features is uh, genealogy unification, which is uh, something that has been uh, uh, talked about uh, for many years and actually come true now. Uh, so the unification works in two ways. Uh, at the driver level, uh, because uh, the raster and driver uh, uh, models uh, were close but not identical. So now they are, they are really the same. Uh, they are managed by the same manager and uh, uh, vector drivers can now uh, have metadata, uh, which is uh, quite interesting. And uh, they can also benefit for uh, efficient driver identification. Uh, that is to say you don't have to uh, uh, open the files uh, 50, uh, 50 times because you have 50 uh, drivers, uh, vector drivers. So it's uh, open uh, just once and the header is analyzed, analyzed and passed through the various uh, driver. Um, and the unification also occur at the data set level. Um, that means that now uh, potentially a data set can have both uh, vector layers and, uh, and uh, raster bounds. And uh, this is actually used in the three uh, drivers I've quoted uh, below, the uh, PCY disk uh, formats, uh, PDF uh, driver, and the GeoPackage driver. And uh, also the, the vector data source and layers can have metadata, uh, which is more potential right now. It's not mainly implemented, but it's, we, can, we can do it now. Uh, the, a new thing is also the introduction of uh, open <laughs> options. Uh, up to now, you had to deal with uh, uh, configuration options, which were not really uh, easily found uh, or could be explored uh, automatically. So now there's a, an abstraction for that. Uh, regarding the compatibility, at the C level, uh, you can, you can keep your existing code. Uh, at the C++ level, you will have to do some changes uh, because mainly the uh, OGR register object uh, doesn't really exist anymore. And, mainly, and for example, its open method has been removed. So you will have to switch to the new uh, GDAL open extended uh, API. Uh, to open uh, vector data sources. So here is uh, the link if you want to, to know all the details. Uh, so here's just an example of uh, requesting uh, uh, the metadata about the PostgreSQL driver. So it's just like uh, what we can do for the, the raster formats uh, cur um, uh, currently. So you get the name and the the various uh, options and, uh, and method it, it supports. Uh, at the bottom, you can see it as a one uh, open uh, option. Uh, and here you have uh, the list of the layer creation option uh, that is today 
when you want to create a, a, new, a new layer, you have all these options uh, which are now uh, uh, discoverable uh, automatically. Uh, another example with a geo package driver. Uh, so here's the interesting things is that you, you see it supports both uh, raster and vector uh, data. And you, you find again uh, the, uh, the list of uh, creation option uh, at the data set level and uh, for the uh, vector layers you have the uh, list of uh, creation options. Uh, now, um, regarding our uh, improvements uh, on the raster IO uh, method, uh, which is a method uh, not to be confused with the raster IO <laughs> project. <laughs> yeah. uh, this method is the main method you, you use in GDAL to uh, extract uh, pixel values uh, from the, the raster bands. Uh, up to now, uh, when you you uh, wanted to do uh, resampling, you, you could just use nearest neighbor, which is fast, but generally not the, the best choice. So now you have access to uh, uh, different uh, methods, which are basically the ones uh, that are available in uh, GDAL Warp or in GDAL, uh, GDAL Adoo. Uh, the GDAL Translate utility, um, so has no uh, resampling flag to uh, specify which algorithm you want. And uh, there are uh, two new uh, uh, API, uh, extended API, uh, to be able to specify uh, the, the resampling method. And uh, as well, uh, you can provide a, a progress or cancel callback. Uh, and uh, for those who, who deal with a really big uh, chunks uh, uh, of data, you, you can have 64-bit uh, uh, spacings uh, for the, when you specify the, the offsets uh, between uh, lines or bonds. Uh, okay, so I'm not sure you will, will appreciate the difference <laughs> between uh, uh, the nearest neighbor on the left and a big cubic resampling uh, on, uh, on the right. So it's actually uh, a massive reduction from a, a, a blue marble uh, tile which was more than uh, uh, 20,000 pixel um, uh, large and, uh, and high. Uh, so what you can see is that the, the processing time has in increased a bit from uh, 45 seconds to a bit more than one minute, but it's not really, really significant. Uh, and here's another example uh, using uh, long source resampling. Uh, on the left, you can see that the, the, uh, the labels are nearly unreadable, and uh, on the right, uh, you can actually uh, realize that it's uh, an open street map uh, extract of Paris. <laughs> um, so the multiple geometry field support, it's something that uh, is already available in uh, GDAL uh, 111. Uh, it's a more proper solution to various acts that existed before. Uh, which involved uh, listing multiple layers when there were uh, uh, several geometry fields uh, on, a, on a table or using a geometry collection uh, to collect uh, all the geometries. So now you have a, a dedicated uh, geometry field uh, description uh, object uh, which can collect the, the field names, uh, geometry types, and the special refer reference system. So you, you can have potentially uh, uh, data of different uh, uh, special reference systems uh, in, the, in the same table if they are in different, uh, uh, different fields. Uh, so of course you have the API to, to access uh, uh, the geometry fields uh, uh, per feature and uh, OGR info and OGR to OGR have been updated of course. And uh, we have uh, quite a few drivers that support uh, multiple geometry fields, uh, PostGIST, uh, GML, and uh, new and GDAL 2.0. We have uh, SQLite. We have uh, Interlis, uh, which is a Swiss format, CSV, memory, uh, and virtual uh, 
virtual uh, data set. Uh, so here's an example of uh, OGR info on uh, interlist uh, example. So you can see uh, it has uh, two geometry fields, one with a polygon uh, outline and one uh, with a, I think it must be the centroid uh, of, the, of the area. Um, in GDAL 2.0, you will have no uh, access to uh, curved geometries. Uh, up to now, um, the uh, geometry uh, that were supported were based on a, a quite old uh, version of a s simple feature uh, specification. And so now we are, we are based on the more recent uh, uh, ISO uh, SQLMM part three, uh, which uh, equivalent in uh, OGC uh, is a, is a one to one uh, version of a simple feature. Uh, so what does it mean? It means that you have no five new geometry types, uh, circular string, common curve, multi-curve, curve, polygon, and multi-surface. So here's a smaller example of uh, uh, four of them. So uh, the purple, uh, the purple is a multi-surface. Uh, it's made of a main curve polygon, uh, which uh, actually is made uh, of uh, four parts. You have uh, a first cir circular string, uh, a straight line, to, uh, another circular string, and uh, another straight line to, to close uh, the compound curve. And uh, the whole is a circular string. And uh, the purple circle uh, inside uh, the whole is uh, another curve polygon. Uh, so what about special operations? Uh, for example, uh, we can tell what is the result of this operation. Uh, I will help you a bit. <coughs> Here's a drawing. <laughs> so you have uh, two half disks. So what is the union of these two? It's this. <laughs> uh, well, actually, you could think that it would be this because the uh, Geos library only works with uh, linear uh, geometries. So when you, you have to um, provide in with in it with data, you have to uh, uh, linearize them uh, before. And of course, the, the end result will be a linearized version uh, of this approximation. Uh, but can we do better? Yes. <coughs> Actually, if you issue this, uh, this command, you will uh, get uh, a nice uh, circular string uh, because uh, uh, we have implemented the algorithm to uh, do the reverse uh, approximation, which, well, of course, it, it's uh, one of the cases where it works uh, very well. Uh, in other, <laughs> in other, uh, in other uh, cases, uh, you will, you might have some glitches, but uh, right. Uh, so, which drivers support uh, curved geometries? We have GML, of course, PostGIS, Interlis, uh, GeoPackage, SQLite, uh, the memory and virtual uh, data sources. Uh, of course, uh, the API has everything to uh, import or export uh, those uh, geometries uh, into uh, WKD or WKT. Uh, the impact on application code is that you must now be ready to deal uh, with uh, the new geometry types uh, that may uh, come uh, from uh, those drivers. Uh, and uh, there are conversion uh, uh, functions that could you can use uh, to uh, uh, linearize uh, curve geometries uh, if you can't deal with them uh, natively. Uh, yeah. And we have still no support for uh, M dimension or other geometry types such as uh, triangu triangulated irregu irregular networks or poly polyhedral surface. Um, and uh, I've read, uh, yeah. In the next uh, QGIS versions, uh, they will support uh, curve geometries too. Uh, another, 
Another feature is the capability of dealing with 64-bit uh, 60 uh, uh, identifiers or field uh, values. Uh, this is something that has caused the issues for many years, uh, mainly uh, on chip files, uh, where you can have uh, integer fields that are above uh, 10 or 11 integers. And so currently, uh, you could have uh, uh, negative values when it was actually uh, a huge uh, uh, positive number. So now, uh, now it is properly fixed. Uh, so it's supported in uh, quite uh, a lot of drivers now. And uh, as, uh, as before, application code uh, must carefully uh, uh, check uh, the, the field type uh, of, the, of the fields. And so if you are, have a hard-coded uh, uh, switch case, uh, you must uh, uh, be careful of adding uh, two new cases for the integer 64 or integer 64 list uh, data types. Uh, another feature is uh, the capability of having subtypes. Subtypes are, in fact, uh, uh, a specialization of, uh, of more general types. For example, we have, we have a Boolean now, uh, which actually is just an integer field, but which uh, a flag that means that uh, it can have only uh, zero or one uh, values. Uh, and, uh, uh, we have also the, the same thing for 16-bit uh, integers or 32-bit uh, floating point values. Uh, and uh, the OGR SQL di dialect has been uh, extended uh, to, uh, to be able to, to deal with that. Uh, yeah. And regarding application code, it shouldn't really matter if you don't uh, adapt your code uh, for that because it's just uh, uh, an extra property. Um, a smaller RFC, which is um, more about uh, being compliant uh, with uh, the SQL standard. Up to now, uh, we were quite uh, permissive about uh, uh, the quoting uh, of, uh, of strings or identifiers, and it could cause uh, problems in, in, such in some cases. So now uh, you will have to be careful of properly uh, quoting stuff. Otherwise, uh, either you will get errors or you will get unexpected uh, results. Uh, not null constraints and default values. Uh, those are mainly interesting for uh, uh, SQL um, uh, backends. Uh, so you, you can now uh, uh, get the, the default and non null uh, constraints, and uh, they can be uh, transported uh, from uh, one format to, to the other one. So, th this can be interesting to, to maintain uh, integrity of, uh, uh, of data sources. Uh, data set transactions uh, up to now, we, we could have uh, uh, transaction support at the layer level. But uh, when you look actually at uh, how it works for the backends, they, they, they only have transactions uh, per connection. So uh, at, the, at the data set level uh, in the OGR world. So uh, now uh, uh, you can have uh, uh, the start transaction, commit transaction, and rollback transaction at the database uh, level. And, uh, uh, the PostGIS driver has received actually uh, bug fixes uh, to be uh, more nice uh, with, uh, with transaction. Uh, up to now, if you wanted to, to read uh, two, uh, two layers in, a, in an interleaved way, it didn't work because uh, uh, the read of the second layer actually reset as a read of the first layer, so now we, it has been fixed. And, uh, there's also uh, an emulation of transactions for database uh, for um, uh, yeah, drivers that wouldn't natively uh, support it. Uh, it mainly works by issuing a, a snapshot uh, of the current uh, data source, and uh, if you uh, roll back it, it will uh, restore it. So nothing really <laughs> incredible, but it, it can still be useful in uh, in some context. Uh, 
uh, geo package support. Um, so we now have a, a fairly uh, full feature implementation of uh, geo package with uh, all the uh, base uh, standard, uh, um, all the base um, uh, featured, and as well as most of the of the um, extensions. Uh, regarding raster enhancements, uh, there have been uh, enhancements in uh, warping uh, at the sp regarding speed and uh, correctness uh, with uh, a resampling uh, uh, algorithm. Uh, uh, there has been also work to, uh, to improve uh, uh, the behavior of the raster block cache uh, when uh, using it in a multi-threaded uh, uh, conditions. So uh, there have been uh, significant uh, advances uh, in that field. Uh, also, the GeoTIF driver has received uh, a few specialized uh, modes uh, that we can use on uh, an uncompressed uh, GeoTIFs and that can deliver uh, significant uh, performance improvements uh, when, uh, when you have uh, uh, fast, uh, fast IO. <laughs> Uh, yeah. The key driver, yeah, I, I must uh, say a few words about it. It's uh, based on uh, HDF5, and uh, actually it has been really designed to implement all the, all the uh, features of the uh, GDAL uh, dataset model. Uh, uh, the PostGIS driver has also received uh, a lot of improvements. Uh, map info tab uh, has now uh, update support. Uh, okay. So, when can I, uh, when can you get it? Uh, <laughs> I hope that we, we can issue a beta one uh, end of next month, and well, maybe end of May for the release is maybe a bit uh, optimistic, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so, if you want to to test this. Uh, please just do it. It's uh, available in subversion, or if you don't want to use a subversion, you have the, the Git uh, mirror too. Uh, regarding a potential fut uh, future uh, project direction, uh, um, uh, Dimitri Barishnikov uh, uh, is being uh, uh, maintaining a, a fork uh, uh, with a, a CMake uh, bit system. Uh, there also um, potentially uh, work uh, to to have a per data set block cache, so you could have uh, uh, zero lock contention uh, on the block cache. Uh, ne geography network model. Uh, this is something that has been developed uh, for summer of code uh, last year. Uh, it's it's waiting uh, for for integration. Uh, planar topology. Uh, that could be something uh, something interesting. Uh, could be based on the ISO modeling and uh, uh, have an interface uh, with uh, PostGIS, GRASS, uh, Raker, uh, GML, Specialite, uh, or TopoJSON. And uh, why not a Topo to Topo utility <laughs> to, to convert topologies uh, between uh, all those backends? Uh, yeah, maybe write support for open 5GDB, a MongoDB driver, various uh, enhancements in uh, the way we, we deal with uh, uh, special systems. Uh, yeah, maybe an alternative geometry library to be, that could be used uh, as a replacement of GEOS because uh, on, on iOS, for example, you, you can't use LGPL, so maybe use boost geometry uh, as an alternative. And uh, of course, uh, more driver performance improvements. That's all. <laughs>